Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you on this Delhi UPSC MCQ series. In the evening, these lessons are coming. In the morning, the Hindu analysis lessons they are coming. So uh, uh, take these two lessons combinedly, and uh, 10 to 15 minute lesson is there in the evening. Very important. All the important uh, resources uh, we are taking here, like uh, uh, newspapers, magazines, PIB website, PPW magazine, everything we are considering here. And the most important selection is there on a daily basis. So this compilation is important. Pocket News app is trending on Google Play. You can download that. And uh, regarding these courses, all the description is given uh, below the video. You can call on these numbers and you can visit the website also. The chat section is available there on the website. PDF you will get here on this uh, page. And uh, actually, it is a group, Facebook group. And you will also find the Telegram channels link there. So uh, there in the on those these two sources, you will get the PDF. On Instagram, you can follow me. And first question is regarding helicopter summit. Helicopter Summit 2019 is very much unique because it is the first ever helicopter summit in India, and uh, it is certainly there at Shastra Dhara Helidrome. But this Shastra Dhara Helidrome is not in Jammu; it is there in Dehradun, Uttarakhand. And uh, first statement would be wrong here. Second, it was organized jointly by uh, not Defence Ministry; it is actually Ministry of Civil Aviation. The Udan scheme is going on and. Uh, that is the main uh, purpose here for these helicopters because in the hilly areas helicopters are the ultimate help there and uh, uh, for uh, making the travels very uh, easy and uh, in less time people can reach up to far places and uh, state government of Uttarakhand is there with the, with the uh, these organizers and uh, the FICI important body Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry so FICI was also there so it is not defense ministry it is actually ministry of civil aviation so both the statements are wrong here D none is the answer. Next question: Species for which the conservation or the breeding program uh, is recently launched. You see, COP fourteen is launched in India, and it is going on uh, uh, in uh, uh, Noida near Delhi in the NCR region, and uh, five thousand members are participating here from one nine above one ninety countries, and uh, this uh, UNCCD uh, convention, this uh, particular. Uh, COP that is going on there there was a paper they read there and they told us that many important species which are extinct in India today like cheetah cheetah was there in India 100 uh, years back 150 years back but it is not there today because it is uh, uh, totally extinct now and that all happened due to desertification so the vegetation lost and the land degraded and uh, it never uh, supported the biodiversity there so like uh, this uh, issue we have another animal there and that's actually a bird great indian bustard you will find it in very very scanty numbers in a desert national park of uh, rajasthan in the western rajasthan near the pakistan border and uh, that is the only place where it is found and it is the state bird of rajasthan it is called godavan there and it is the heaviest flying bird actually because ostrich they cannot fly this can fly but it is this is the heaviest bird and uh, its population is decreasing with, with a very fast pace 75 percent of the population is dead due to the power line cables means they got stuck into these power line cables and they were dead and uh, now the breeding program is launched and uh, the ngt has said to central government and the ministry of environment especially that come up with a time bound program there and this breeding program must uh, give its impact and this uh, uh, species must be saved so they have also this uh, they have also mentioned this important species there in cop 14 there so c is the answer great indian bustard or godown they can call it in a rajasthani language okay it is the state bird there so it's a joint committee officials of ministry of environment forest and climate change and ministry of power and ministry of new and renewable energy this will be a joint committee for three ministries okay next aspirational district program adp it's a very important one we have discussed this issue many many times that uh, they select districts according to their needs means all districts are not same some are very much advanced some are very very backward so the backward districts most backward districts and there are important socio-economic criteria like education health nutrition and uh, the financial issues and uh, other developmental issues so they select these districts on these basis and they rank districts also. So aspirational district program is not by Ministry of Home. It is by Niti Ayog. 
Niti Aayog's flagship program it is aspirational district program and they are focusing a lot of schemes and a lot of programs on the basis of this evaluation so recently NCPCR decided to visit these districts and many many complaints it was getting regarding the uh, malnutrition issue the ch children's security issues and uh, crime against children that those issues so national council for protection of child rights they are visiting these districts so second is correct and first is wrong because it is not, it is not by minister of home it is by niti ayog so only two is the right answer here you can see 117 aspirational districts uh, ncpcr is going to visit there and uh, uh, you can see these important five themes health and nutrition education agriculture and water resources financial inclusion and the skill development next slide next what is this slide next 2019 is it a air exercise is it a military drill is it a disaster response exercise or the maritime fleet exercise this is happening uh, uh, there in Vishakhapatnam, being organized, organized there and uh, it's actually a maritime fleet exercise between india and sri lanka on annual basis they conduct this exercise and since 2005 it is going on between sri lanka and india so the answer is d here you see they have sent SLNS Sindurala and uh, Surani Mala from Sri Lanka to Vishakhapatnam coast. So there it is gonna uh, be scheduled and Slinex 2019. Every year it is there. Annual exercise. Next. To achieve the GDP of $5 trillion by 2425, India needs to spend about uh, 100 lakh crore rupees. Is it a correct statement? Yes, it was also in the announcement of uh, Prime Minister there on the Independence Day and he talked about the infrastructure issue and he said 1.4 trillion dollars or around 100 lakh crore rupees we need to invest if you want to achieve the 5 trillion dollar economy goal so that's important next this statement uh, is also relevant a task force recently constituted by union finance minister but the chairmanship is not by ceo niti ayog it is by secretary department of economic affairs and that comes under the financial ministry so this task force under the chairmanship of uh, uh, secretary dea has been constituted by union finance minister and uh, they will draw up a national infrastructure pipeline nip that's why that's the important announcement there and it was there in pib national infrastructure pipeline for each of these years means they will submit all the programs and the detailed project reports and all these uh, issues for all these years so uh, now they are going to submit for 1920 and the uh, important indicative program for 2021 and 2022 so answer is uh, one only because second is wrong it is not chaired by ceo niti ayog it is secretary department of economic affairs and these details are given here in the pdf please go through all these details chairmanship of secretary dea okay so around 1.4 uh, trillion dollars we need to in, uh, invest in next five years and how much we have spent in last 10 years that is only 1.1 trillion dollars and now more than that we need to invest there in next five years so this is a list there for members and the chairman next seharias there was a news on 31st of august regarding seharias that they are dying uh, in many many numbers due to the tuberculosis disease because in tribes uh, there is less awareness and uh, more vulnerable these uh, tribes tribes are their uh, genes and all they are very much vulnerable and uh, there is a high prevalence among these families so Saharias are actually a tribe and there is a separate list of particularly vulnerable tribal groups PVTGs so there are 75 PVTGs in this country in Rajasthan state there is only one PVTG that is Saharia mainly it is found in northwestern uh, districts of madhya pradesh and also found in rajasthan there so uh, saharias are pvtgs and uh, you know in the central part of india vindhyachal uh, and satpura hills uh, in all these regions these tribes are mainly found saharias are very much backward and uh, uh, they are fighting many many problems malnutrition is the main issue that appeared in the newspaper today and uh, the tuberculosis they are also fighting with and many many developmental issues are there because pvtgs their uh, symptoms are like uh, their populations are stagnant 
they are fighting with many many disease some genetic disease are also uh, uh, troubling these groups and uh, they are not joint uh, uh, to the mainstream developmental process and uh, they are mostly living the life of hunters and the gatherers and the agricultural ways and all they are also not much developed so that's the issue and that's why many many problems are there and that's why there is a separate list of pvtes among all the tribal groups in india so maximum numbers are there in odisha state and sahariyas are a pvt so second statement is correct first is wrong because they are not in karnataka they are in rajasthan and madhya pradesh the details are given here shiopur bhind gwalior datia these are the districts of uh, madhya pradesh in the northwestern part and the bara district of uh, southeastern rajasthan you can see uh, all these details are given next is a very important question related to sahariyas again you see the national average uh, is it 204 out of 1 lakh people in this country who are uh, tb patients tb prevalence in india so uh, really that much is, is the density and uh, average is 204 people are infected among every 1 lakh people in india in, in this country with tb bacterial disease very much infectious disease and uh, in the poor dense of uh, uh, these urban slums slum areas and uh, many backward areas of this country families are getting this infection simultaneously because it's a highly infectious disease and the mdr tb issue is really haunting those populations especially so we have made a target of ntb strategy and that is for 2025 who's target is for 2035 but we have made a advanced target of 2025 and it's a very huge challenge for our uh, ministries so uh, let's see how they are going to achieve this target but it's a huge one it's a big challenge because it's a highly highly infectious disease and the issue of mdr tb and xdr tb is uh, really haunting this world and these countries like india where all these poor populations in uh, high dense areas Uh, this disease is re- is is a, it's a big killer there so second statement is wrong because india's target is for is for 2025 w who's target is for 2035 so first is correct only one is the answer here next india china strategic economic dialogue sed it was established by not niti aayog because in december 2010 it was not niti aayog in the picture it was planning commission and planning commission and ndrc of china national development reform commission they started this important uh, economic dialogue and wen jiabao was the president of china at that time he visited india and then it was started so first is uh, wrong here because niti aayog was not there in the uh, uh, 2010 year and second statement is correct india is hosting sixth india china strategic economic dialogue that is going on in new delhi so only two is the right answer here b is the right answer next lake tanganyika lake tanganyika divides which countries drc zimbabwe drc tanzania drc means democratic republic of congo so these are all countries uh, located near the equator in african continent so uh, their locations and these lakes are extremely important because uh, you see the african continent Uh, the great rift system is uh, dividing this uh, continent and after lakhs of may or maybe uh, millions of billions of years later this whole part the horn of africa that is here like this that will be separated from the mainland of african continent and uh, in all these areas uh, there are lakes so lake malawi is here lake tanganyika is here and uh, uh, the victoria lake is here all these lakes are present but this tanganyika is actually separating tanzania uh, and drc country so b is the answer you can see in the map drc tanzania lake uh, tanganyika this is lake malawi here separating malawi and tanzania lake victoria is here uganda and tanzania as are separated and uh, this is the equatorial region from where the equator is passing so this is all for today we will meet again tomorrow with many more questions and thanks a lot keep watching it was a bit challenging